Gang, it's Wednesday. It's May the 22nd. And as promised, we're going to strict press today. We're going to strict press uh, with maybe some, I don't know, interesting volumes. We're going to have it be 8642. The expectation is that you're ramping, but the expectation is also that these sets go unbroken. And that's hard. It's hard to pinpoint exactly for, especially for like sets of six and eight, figure out what the exact most challenging weight is that I can also not have to put down. So the nice thing about strict press is remember, you can rest in the front rack. Does that make things easier? Not necessarily, but if you feel like it might help you, it's absolutely fine to stop for a second. As long as you're not re-racking the bar, then that's an unbroken set. Um, so do your best to try to figure out how to best ramp from eight to six to four to two. And, uh, and keep in mind also that we're going to do like something a little bit unique for us, which is we're going to superset these strict presses with today. We're going to use gorilla rows, but we'll throw some different looks at you across the cycle today. The gorilla row just gives us an opportunity to make sure that, you know, between the bench press on Monday and the strict press on Wednesday, that it's not all press. It's not all push. It's not all getting things away from us. It's also, we can, we can do some, uh, we can do some pulling towards us as well. Another wad today. Uh, very classic, very classic CrossFit today. We have a triplet for you that is going to include a barbell. Uh, and that is, uh, it's a 12-minute AMRAP. And in that 12 minutes, it's uh, six handstand push-ups. It is eight box jumps. And then 10 hang power cleans, which we think could be unbroken for most of the workout. So choose a loading that's going to help us to do that. We'll call it no heavier than 115 and 75. Now, Wednesdays have been, for skills over the last couple of uh, couple of cycles, a day where a lot of the wads that we program allow you the time and the space to practice something at a volume that's not going to crush you. And today is kind of like that with regard to these handstand push-ups. Six is not a, a big per round volume. And I know I'm speaking very uh, relatively, like that's maybe true for me, maybe not true for everybody. But in general, um, even if you are modifying, six is a shorter, lower number. And 12 minutes and AMRAP is a, you know, it's a moderate, moderate uh, uh, length for a lot. So, you know, do we want you to spend the entire the entirety of the wad getting getting uh, stopped at the handstand push-ups? No, but we do feel like it's a good day to say like, okay, I, I have two handstand push-ups. I'll do two of my best handstand push-ups, you know, as close to RX as possible. And then and then four something else's, right? Just four pikes, four from a box, something like that. And we'll be able to move through pretty well at that pace. We don't want you to stop at the six handstand pushups and just like, you know, stop at the wall, bottleneck, not really move past it. Don't let it take more than a minute, whatever you do. And if you can do that, then this thing, this wad moves pretty well. The box jumps. Uh, the first thing that we got to say is intentionally, but hard to talk about. This is the kind of workout where a um, lot of posterior chain. So it might be, it might, uh, it might surprise you how much your backside all the way, you know, from your glutes, your hamstrings up, maybe your lower back, even your lats a little bit get worked, um, constantly. You might not think that thinking about these, these movements, handstand, push up, box jump, but box jumps require you to load and explode. Handstand push ups require you to load and explode. Um, <laughs> hang power cleans require you to load and explode. These are all hinge and then violent or aggressive hip extension all three of those movements and that requires a strong backside um entirety of your posterior chain and so that's where the challenge of this workout comes from how do you prepare for that well one of the re ways to prepare for that is just to be aware of it going in uh to be aware that those uh you know you have to be it's tough to do nonstop movement on a workout like that. You have to be sort of strategic in how you transition from movement to movement. You have to keep a steady pace, but that's not too fast. You have to try to not redline, all of those things. We do think you can go unbroken on the hang power cleans at least for a few rounds though. Um, if you have the skill of pogo box jumps, 
eight is a pretty good number to practice that at. And then it really comes down to how fatigued is your posterior chain because that would be a big limiting factor in your ability to pogo. But we'll see, right? Everybody's going to be different in regard to that. I did not pogo the box jumps, but I did go unbroken on the 115 barbell for myself. So my score was eight plus eight. Today, I think that's a beatable score, but we'll see. All right, guys, enjoy this one.